So tonight, I'm speaking to you for the eighth time on the subject, anointed and appointed for action. You like it? Yeah. You know, I would give, I would, uh, I, I would give anything if, uh, if America could, uh, could, could, could retain her wonderful, uh, freshness toward God's Word. Uh, it's, it's so unfortunate. We read about the children of Israel in the wilderness. They got tired of the miracles. They, they longed for Egypt, for the garlic and the onions, you know. And in the very wonderful miracle power of God, they came to loathe the manna from heaven <laughs> for the garlic. I guess it was flavored better or something. I don't know. But, uh, but uh, when, when, we, when we live, uh, I was thinking, things like we talk about. Uh, last, the last service, yeah, Wednesday night, I pulled out of my pocket a letter and read it that uh, had been handed to me from a woman. And here it was written in nice handwriting. You know, I was... I was a uh, head cancer, terminal cancer, came, was prayed for. You and Daisy laid hands on me. And I am writing this letter to tell you that I was cured. The cancer died. Hallelujah. And I'm well. Isn't that beautiful? And you know, we hear that. And let's not ever let that go in one ear and out the other. If I, by the finger of God, cast out devils. Then the kingdom of God is come near to you. Whenever, whenever these things take place, we're touching the kingdom of God. I live for that. I live with purpose. I live with objectivity. I have a reason to be alive in life. I'm anointed. I'm appointed for action. Are you? Yes. Say, I am. I am. This study is being based on the first sentence in the book of Acts. That beautiful long sentence that spans four verses and interconnects the ministry of Jesus in the body of a Jew that they call Jesus from a town called Nazareth. Interconnects him with his return in the body, bodies of different people. For example, Peter and Paul and, uh, and uh, all different people kinds of people in the book of Acts. But the same, say the same Jesus. In this study of this sentence, I've noted seven principles. The principle of maturity. They spell miracle, M-I-R-A-C-L-E, M, maturity. I, I've noted the principle of inspiration. I've shared that with you. R, I've noticed the principle of response. We always, God's accomplishment through us depends on our response to his call upon our life. Oh, how I want to be like Jeremiah or like Isaiah. Me, me, count me in. Okay, I'm here, I'll go, me. You know, not everybody feels that way. Many people want to hide when the call goes forth and say, not me, I'm afraid, I can't, I'm not worthy, I can't. No, I want to stand up and wave a flag and say, hey, me, 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 I'll go, I'll do it because I've learned that the greatest security, the greatest prosperity, the greatest peace, the greatest blessing, the greatest fulfillment, the greatest achievement, the greatest success, the greatest self-esteem comes in participating in God's work. 
His will, His plan, it never fails. I'm on His side. <laughs> I run with Him. We never lose. We always win. Response, a powerful ingredient, basic in us. These are principles I'm talking about. Bridging between the example of Jesus and then the example of those who followed him. He succeeded. They succeeded. He said, what I do you can do. They believed it and it worked. Anointed and appointed for action. Our response, a action. That's the one we're on now. Anointed and appointed for action action. We're basing this on the part of this verse after that Jesus, through the Holy Ghost, gave commandment to the apostles whom he had chosen. Now, this is strong meat. I'm sharing with you the strongest truth that I have shared over the years, the 40 years of ministry around the world that has changed nations and it will change you if you want to be changed. A lot of people don't want to be changed, but I think you do or you wouldn't be here. What, how do we want to be changed? We want to be changed into the image of Jesus. We want to, we want to, we want to, be the vessel through which he can show himself. I want to constantly conform to his image in action. And so this is the strongest truth I know in the Bible. This truth, as I've said, is the reason for the success of our ministry in over 70 countries. This truth is the, on the cutting edge, it's the truth that has made the difference in our crusades around the world. They have been nation-changing crusades. Crusades out of which have been birthed a core of messengers who cut on to what we were teaching and went out and did it and got the same results. Brother Bolong in Indonesia, a young man when we were there, he was so impressed by the meetings and by the miracles that he set himself to fasting and praying. He fasted and prayed for 21 days of the Jakarta Crusade. I didn't know it, I just noticed he was becoming quite thin and gaunt looking when he would come to the meeting at night. But there was a power about him. At the end of 21 days, the Lord spoke to him. He said, like a trumpet came out of his little, his little house. I was telling some, somebody recently when we were in Surabaya, Java, about this case. And the preacher that I was sharing it with, because he knew Brother Bolong very well, he says, oh, yes, I know the very house. He told me about it. I know exactly. You're telling it just like he told it to me. A trumpet came out of the bamboo wall of that house and said to him, use the power that I have given unto you. You see, that's the bottom line of the charismatic church worldwide, the need to use what we have. Until our creed is transformed into deed, we haven't learned the creed. Chester has learned the creed and made it into a deed. It's simple. There's nothing complex about it. And I, he's not the only one. Others of you are doing it. We want to encourage you. I keep using him as an example. I want you to become as vocal as he is. 
He's not, he's not uh, pounding on our door trying to get attention. He's polite, courteous, always waits for an invitation. But he contacts us, lets us know what's going on, is excited about it. Try it. you like it. Hallelujah. Are you glad for that? This is bound to be the way it was in Jesus' day. They went out. They did what he did. It worked. They came back. They said, wow, we did what you said. And you know what? The devils came out when we told them to. He said, terrific. Rejoice also that their names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Seeming to mean when you touch them, God hooks up with them. And their names are marked down. Glory to God, I believe. When I come in contact with somebody, that somebody has dealt with destiny. Me, T.L. Osborne, an ordinary Oklahoma farmer fella, when I come in contact with people, I have marked them with destiny. That's what Jesus is talking about. Sure, the devils come out. I told you they would. But don't get carried away about that. That's terrific. But the big thing is rejoice that their names are written. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? And as we come to believe in our ministry, as we come to take note of us hooked up with God and the power that is is uh, is invested in that unity between God and us. And as we venture out to use that power to help and heal a hurting world, you can mark it down. We'll tell about it. We'll talk about it. We'll share about it. Hallelujah! Because it's the most exciting thing that a human person can understand. Listen, the world over, Religions are, they proliferate. I've never been in a country where they did not have plenty religion. And every priest, every witch doctor, every priestess, every agent of witchcraft, every priest of religion in the world is ministering on behalf of people who would love to contact God but don't know how, but they so want contact with God in some way, whatever God they believe in, that they will hire and pay a witch or a priest or an intermediary to represent them and get them a favor from the big being, whatever it is. So, it is a fact that people want rapport with God. Christianity is the only avenue of rapport with God, contact with God. There is no other way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but by Him. Are you hearing me? This Jesus wants contact with us, 10,000 times more than we know how to desire contact with him. God, our heavenly Father, yearns for contact with people more than people know how to yearn for contact with him. But people, because of religion, are frightened and are demoralized and are intimidated and are negated and are made to feel unworthy and assume because of religion, take your choice, any of it, all brands of it. It's all the same. They're all on the same road because none of them have God, so they don't know God, so all they know is to be afraid of God, and they're all teaching the same thing. But come to us and pay well, and we can guarantee you that we'll hatch up some kind of a ceremony that'll be convincing to you that we will represent you to the great God. And the more you pay us, the better we'll do. And that 
is so all over the world, no exceptions. And Christianity is the only form of worship in which the object worship dwells in the heart of the worshiper. The only one. We are the people of God. We walk with God. The power of God is at work within us. And can have free flow through us once we can comprehend the miracle of redemption and of grace that Pastor LaDonna preached about this morning. When we comprehend that he paid for us, we didn't pay for him. He loved us, we didn't love him. He wanted us, we didn't want him. He came to us, we didn't come to him. He reached out and touched us. We didn't reach up and touch him. He saved us. We didn't save him. And when we understand that we, nothing we paid can earn it, but when we understand that wonderful rapport and can somehow extract ourselves from the religious, from, from the ambiance of religion and the influence of religion that hangs over us like a cloud in our subconscious. Once we can extract ourselves from that and come in to the free, cool, beautiful atmosphere of redemption, of restoration to God Almighty as his partners and friends, and can take our position with him as his partners whom he loves and calls special friends. Once we can break ourselves loose from the condemnation that's trailed us and dogged us because of what's been programmed into us from our childhood and can stand up and stretch ourselves in the free and breathe the beautiful clear air of truth, of redemption, then God through us can do anything. Hallelujah. And that's the idea of the new covenant. And this sentence that we're talking about bridges between the idea of Jesus showing us how it's done and the idea of the early Christians starting in, imitating him, learning how to do it. Isn't it beautiful? And God claps his hands and watches it, said, see, it's working, it's working, it's working. I'm in all of them now. Look at it. Hallelujah. I was in Jesus, one body. That wasn't enough. Now I can be in all of them because the kingdom of God has come. Repent and believe the gospel. Hallelujah. Because your sins have been taken away and all that you've done wrong and all that's been done wrong down through history has been paid for now and put away through the blood of Jesus Christ and the new covenant that I have shared with you now. I take you as my friends. If you believe that, we can walk together and you can do wonderful things because I'll live in you. Hallelujah. So that's, you see, this is the deepest, the most profound truth that can be taught in Christianity. And I'm giving you this. I wish the church was full tonight. I wish every seat was packed. Oh, how I would love to share this. This is what can make the difference in Tulsa. This is what can change the world. This is what is changing nations around the world. Hallelujah. This is the mission Dr. Daisy is on now to Uganda with the First Lady and the President of Uganda receiving her. This is the mission. This is the idea. This is what brings new hope to a nation. This is what can bring them out of poverty and of shame and of sickness and of incurable diseases. This can bring them and lift them to God's level. Hallelujah. And who knows, out of Uganda can go cores of New Testament ministers that can save Africa. You believe it? You believe that? Hallelujah. How you doing out there? This is the truth that changes the world. You see, 
in essence. Write this down or say this to yourself. He called us. Say it louder. Put it in me. He called me. He anointed me. He chose me. He sends me. Write those down and look up all the scriptures you can find to go with them. I made a little list of seven things here that I jotted down just before the meeting tonight. He came, Jesus came to show us God's idea. You believe that? Number two, Jesus chose a new crowd to follow him. That's number two. Number three, Jesus sat down and trained them how to do it. Hallelujah. Number four, Jesus believed in the new crowd that he chose, unworthy and untrained and unreligious as it was. He believed in them. Glory to God. Life-changing facts here. Number five, Jesus called them. Hallelujah. Number six, Jesus sent them. They were the ones that he sent. And number seven, Jesus anointed them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And anything he did to them, he's doing to me. I'm talking about the bridge sentence between him showing them how and the ones that went and did it and it worked. And I add my testimony in Tulsa, Oklahoma and wherever this video journeys. I say, I did like they did, and it's worked for me too. And I've proven it all over the world for four decades, and I witness to you the glad news. The ideas that Jesus showed us work. They're simple. They're not complicated. And all you got to do is go and believe in them and touch people. They work. They work. They work. A product that works. <laughs> That's the best recommendation you can have. You believe that? It was an awesome experience for these followers of Jesus to comprehend this new idea. He comes and in essence he's telling them, as I've told you before, no longer the system. God is tired of the system. People have abused the system. I am rolling up the system. The system is no longer the medium. I've come with God's original idea. He's tired of the system. God sent me. He's in me. You see me, you see God. Now, follow me, watch me. I'll show you how it works. Amen? I told you the first time I brought up that point, and I keep bringing it up again. Go through the New Testament. Put on new ears. Put on new eyes. Read the Gospels from that perspective. Read the four accounts of the life of Jesus from the perspective of Jesus coming. Remember these few lines, this small box of copy, Jesus coming, saying, the system no longer works. God is tired of it. He sent me. He's in me at work showing the world what he's like and he's showing it so that everybody can be like me and fulfill God's dream. So follow me, watch me, and learn the new way. Read the Gospels and see the different ways Jesus Sit down to teach them. Now, hey, look, you follow me. You do what I do. You learn my way. God's in me. I say the words. The Father in me does the works. It's simple, but you got to repent. That means you got to change your way of thinking. That old way don't work. The system is ended. It's disgusting. God's fed up with it. 
Follow me and listen. Hey, I don't call you servants. I call you friends. A servant don't know what his master does, but you do. God's plan is for you to know everything that he does. You're in, baby. I call you my friends. God wants friends. Do you see why he had to go find a new crowd? He had plenty of religious people, but they wouldn't be his friends. Will our religion keep us from being God's friend? Will we be so hung up on our unworthiness and our so-called humility that we can't be God's co-worker? That's all that was wrong with them. They missed it. He said, hey, I'm trying to get through it to you. You're my friends. Remember I told you, just watch me learn how I do. The way I do it, you can do it. My father sent me to show you how. All through his ministry, that was his focus. Teaching, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom is God has come now in me. He reigns. He's here. He's alive. The kingdom of heaven is in you. The only reason they couldn't hear was because they still had on their religious ears. They knew the scriptures, but they, had, they were looking at them through their religious spectacles. You've got to change eyes and change ears. And it's hard to get a new set, but we can do it. Hallelujah. We can do it. We're doing it. We're gaining. I'm smart. I keep preaching this again and again and again. Because what's the use to let something this big, what's the use to let this roll off of you like water off of a duck's back? You don't want it to roll off of you. You want to get it, but new thoughts take a long time to think. Old thoughts go through quick. New ones, we have to ponder. Try learning a language. Learn a new word. It takes time to integrate that new word. Later, it flutters in the sentences beautifully. But when it's, you got three new words, oh, it's work. You think on it and you say it. May God give us the grace to integrate new ideas of who we are, where we came from, what's paid for us, what God thinks about us, what Jesus accomplished for us, what we can do in his name, who we are, what our purpose is. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why I go over it again and again and again. Every time I go over it, it soaks in on you more. I want to give you this story. All these years, these years, Jesus teaching, teaching, teaching. Then he changed roles and became, as we preached during Behold the Sun series, he became then our substitute and died in our place and took that role as our lamb, our sacrifice, our blood sacrifice. Thank you for that song tonight. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. He became our sacrifice, died, and that 
was the only sacrifice we ever have to make. And we didn't make it. He made it for us and came back and announced it. I did it for you. Well, all you got to do is believe. Isn't that beautiful? Could it be that God might ever say, I made it too easy? You know, you repented once way back there, said, I shouldn't have made people. They just abused everything. Reckon God ever thinks, I made it too easy. They just are determined to work for it. They just don't accept it. They think they got to do something. When will religion quit? God must think. I tried to stop it when I sent my son. He paid for all of the sins of the world. I did that so that no religion could ever collect for sins again. But they're still collecting and giving out just enough forgiveness to last till the next meeting so they can take another offering. Religion, religion, not that way here. Here we give to spread the good news, but in religion you pay to have contact with God. You pay the minimum and you get minimal, <laughs> just a little. And then he came back. He died. They saw him die. Blew their hopes. They didn't understand the scriptures. They didn't under. Are you hearing me? They didn't understand the scriptures. Oh, my friends, I want to understand the scriptures. They're there. They're alive. They dance. They vibrate. <clears throat> and he said to them in Luke 24, you know, it was the disciples going down to Emmaus. Excuse me, not going down there, but reporting. And they came back, you know, that wonderful experience they had. Jesus came and walked with them. He's so close to us all the time. Don't miss him. Recognize him. Honor him. Hallelujah. <laughs> they had come back from Emmaus and had had this awesome, awesome experience. Wow. When I think of those people, I just marvel. Jesus came with them, walked with them, talked with them. And they were conveying their woes about this terrible thing that had happened, how that the one that they trusted was the Messiah was killed and buried. Tell him all about it. Yeah. They said some women said that they'd heard that he raised, said, you know, our hearts are real sad. What the women said didn't amount to anything. He talked to them beginning at those scriptures and shared with them all what the prophets had said about his coming and dying and coming back again. But their eyes were holding because they didn't understand the scriptures. He went on home with them. They got him to come in and eat with them. He ate, broke bread in the breaking of bread. Their eyes were open. They knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. Isn't that a beautiful story? Now listen. You talk about some fellows excited. These guys were turned on. I say guys, I don't know. It might have been a couple. Who knows? They were turned on. We're talking about this Jesus that kept telling them all of his teaching time, look, God's in me. You do like I do. I love you. You love one another. Pass on this love. You can do anything I do. If you believe in me, the works that I do, you do also. 
Go out everywhere you go, all over the world. Pick your country, pick your town, go anywhere. Use my name, cast out devils, heal sick people. You can do everything I can do because I'll never leave you. I'm with you to the end of the world. Hallelujah. Terrific words. And then he got, then they killed him. These guys, you know, were so sorry. But man, a life, he was alive again. And they said, now we know why our hearts were burning as we walked with him in the way. It was him. You reckon they finished supper? I don't know. I don't know whether they finished or not. They took off and headed up for the clan. They headed up for the rest of the group, and they met, and they told them what had happened can you imagine the excitement of this meeting? And suddenly, while the Bible says in verse 41 of Luke 24, while they were, they yet, <laughs> well, wait, Jesus comes into them and, and appears to them and says, Peace be to you. They're in shock. He said, Behold the hands of my feet, that's I myself. Handle me and see. Handle me. For spirit doesn't have flesh and bones like you see me have. And listen to this. While they yet believed not. Can you imagine this? We're talking about a people in an epoch when it was impossible to think a new thought about God. You couldn't come to God direct. God was awesome. And you only brought a blood sacrifice to a priest and had a ceremony. Nobody could come to God any other way. Now God sent Jesus through this miraculous birth and these three years he's walked with them and talked with them and taught them they're still not catching on because it takes a long time to think a new thought. It's tough. That's the only thing that's holding you up is the grappling with this new idea, God, really in you. Really? Yeah, figuratively, I love the word, though. So. But not really. Me, like Jesus, Come on. Oh, I love the words. Hallelujah. Not really. It's a new thought. New thoughts come hard. And they take a long time to think. And a longer time from to penetrate and motivate action. My subject, anointed and appointed for action. The same kind Jesus had. Glory to God. Glory to God. While they yet believe not, for joy, comma, and wondered, comma. <laughs> They're getting a, some of them, maybe those two guys have been down there, if it was two guys in downtown Mass, maybe they were the ones that wondered. I don't know. Are you seeing the labor, the toil, the strain, the agony? of coming to realize this Jesus is real. Are you doing that? Don't do that. Take it joyfully. Reform your vocabulary. Hallelujah. And your thinking pattern. Practice the presence of Jesus. Delight in being a new creature. If anyone be in Christ, it's a new creature. Old things passed away. All things become new. And wondered, while they were doing that, he asked, I guess I'll put some words in my mouth, well, for heaven's sakes, have you got any meat around here? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, I'm sure he didn't say that, but, but, uh, but what I'm saying, he's, he's trying again. He said, touch me. He says, the spirit don't have flesh and bones. I've got flesh and bones. Well, if you're still wondering, 
Have you got any meat? Let's eat. Let's do something. I'm trying to get you to catch on. Hey, you're my friends. God's pulling a new deal. It's easy. I'm alive. You can be alive. There's power. You got any meat? Let's eat together. Let me do something to show you that it's real. See? He's grappling with people. He's trying to help people think these new thoughts and have these new ideas. Young people, you're being birthed on these new ideas. Take them real. Don't bring them down to the level of today's moral code. Hold them holy and high and walk in dignity. You can change your world. One of you can change your world. It's amazing what a human person can do when they discover this reality of the new birth and of the Holy Ghost coming into this new birth person and showing Jesus in action through that person. So much more than just talking in tongues. You know a lot of people, I have compassion. That's all they've known about the Holy Ghost. Thank God we speak with tongues. It's wonderful. Oh, I couldn't be satisfied without it. But oh, there's so much more. Don't you agree? We have more. The world wants more than that. We have more to offer. And he said to him, These are the words that I spoke to you while I was yet with you. Isn't this plain? That all things should be fulfilled. Verse 44. Which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. See, never forget the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Jesus said, always study those. Look in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms for what it says about me. Do like the Jews did. Look for the portions that talk about me, Jesus said. See, that's a wonderful revelation. That's what Paul did. That's how he got the revelation. And he said, then he opened their understanding. Oh, may God do the miracle in you tonight. My friends, when this understanding came to me, and the scriptures came alive to me, the reality of Jesus in me. Oh, I wish I could tell you and teach you all of the principal problems that were solved. Hallelujah. People just marvel at our ministry all over the world. So simple, so effective, so powerful. So nation changing, so people changing. It's simple. It's when the scriptures are opened to where you actually grasp them, take them for face value, and walk out on them with all of your life. Say, this is the way it is. It's written, and God's word cannot fail. It means what it says about me. And I am here in his name to represent him to people. How can I hold him prisoner in my life when hurting people are all around me who need his touch and his love? When he wants to give that touch and that love through me, I change my mind about myself. I repent. I accept your idea of who I am, Lord. I will go in your name. I will live. I will go to bed and I will rise up of a morning each new day with the delightful consciousness that I am Christ's representative in flesh and the Holy Spirit is in me and takes Christ in me and shows him through me. No longer will I beg and groan for people to know Jesus. 
I'll go tell them. I'll go touch them. I'll go show them. Hallelujah. I'll pray. I'll believe. I'll go in his name. He'll go with me. Oh, what a fellowship. Oh, what joy divine. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? Yes. Knowing what Christ has done for me, he lives in me. I'm his messenger. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, Thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name, not in a heifer's name, not in a bull's name, not in a goat's name, <laughs> but in his name to all nations. Now look, look what he's capsulizing here. He's saying, hey, now look now, now look now. This is what it's all about. I've been trying to tell you that God is in you. He opened their understanding. He says, now, this is what I've been telling you all along in the scriptures. And I've been impressing on you, preach repentance to all the world. They've got to change their mind and think different. They can't go with the old system. It's new. God's in people. God's in people, not in a system. God's in individuals. I've been telling you it all the time, he said, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name, glory to God, in the name of Jesus who shed his blood for the remission of our sins, not the blood of bulls and goats, but the blood of the Son of God, incorruptible blood. Is that right? We got to preach that to the whole world. He said, that's the point I've been trying to get across to you. Look, you understand? That's your purpose. You're to go to all the world. Are you getting, are you seeing new light in this? Are you seeing this with new light? Beginning at Jerusalem. And you, verse 48, you are witnesses. See, you're the ones I'm counting on. You've been here when it's happened. The world is waiting on you. You have got it. The only ones that can tell it are the ones who have it. Do you have it? Do you know something about Jesus that's so good you can't keep quiet about? Will you share it? You believe so much in the healing power of God that you let it heal people? Will you stand around and let them die when you could heal them? Doctors go out and sacrifice a lot of their youth to go to school, a lot of their young married life. They sacrifice it in endless hours of study and all that stuff. Their children come on. Many of them hardly get to see them, can't go to the park with them, can't run and romp with them because they're in the operating room day and night toiling. Hell, we can carelessly say, oh, they do it for money. No, a lot of them don't. Sure, some do. Some preachers are bad. So it's some of everything's bad. But no, good doctors do it. They care about hurting people. A preacher makes a little bit of a sacrifice and whines for the next six months about it. A doctor gets up all hours of the night, has no life of his own. He don't complain. Does a doctor have more love? For, and he don't claim he's doing it. A lot of them don't even claim to be saved. Don't claim any contact with God. Don't claim any love from God at all involved in it. They want to help people. Do we love the sick and the hurting and the sinful and the weary and the lonely less than a medical doctor does who don't even claim to hook up with God? I've loved you. Love one another. Is this coming through? Amen. Jesus said, you're the witnesses. And he said, now just hold it one more thing. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but wait until you're endued with power. And they led him out and blessed them, went away, and they went back and stayed, and the power fell, and they went. Glory to God. Amen? That's the way you wrap them up quick. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, the idea was, he said, now, you're getting the idea, but now one more thing is important. You can only do this. 
by the power of the Holy Ghost in you. He alone, it is his office, his ministry to take me in you and show me to the world through you. So get the power. Get the power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You believe in it? Amen. Have I helped you? Amen. Get the power. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you that have watched my video. May his power come to you. May his blessing rest upon you. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, may sickness depart from you. May you live by the power of the resurrected Christ. Whatever you need, whatever you long for, arouse yourself, shake yourself. Say, Jesus, open the scriptures to me. Let me catch on to this right now. God has sent this message to you. It's a miracle. This truth has come to you. You might have gone a long time and not heard this. Take it. It's simple. Jesus is there with you. Embrace it and go share it. May his peace bless you as you go. May his power be upon you. I pray in the holy name of Jesus Christ that the power of the gospel will show itself in you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah.